<laughs> Hi, I'm Andy Griffiths. I'm here with Guardian Australia to answer all of your questions. And then apparently you sent in hundreds of questions. We're going to get through as many as we can. Hello, Andy. My name's Sophie. And what, and what pet do you have? We have a cat, uh, not a flying cat anymore. That one flew away. But we have a cat called Ruby with one eye. Hi Sophie, the big question. Who would win between the Trunkinator and a giant crab in a fight? Um, who, uh, I think I would put my money on the giant crab. The giant crab has got two enormous claws. So I think the giant crab could uh, maybe block the punch with one claw and then bring its its uh, claw in and cut the trunkinator's trunk clean off. And then he wouldn't be the trunkinator anymore. He'd be the no trunkinator and definitely the, uh, the giant crab would win that fight. Can I please be a character in one of your books because I love them. <laughs> Hi, Carlos. Great, great to hear from you. Um, we have a lot of people asking if they can be in our books and we're always happy to have them because our sharks, the ones that live in the man-eating shark tank, are very hungry. So if you would like to um, volunteer to be um, one of their, their meals, we, are, we would love to have you and I'm sure the sharks would love to see you as well. So I'll tell them that you're coming. Hi Beth, uh, do Terry and Andy know they are in a book? That is a really great question. I think they certainly know they're writing a book and they often refer to to that. But whether I don't think I've ever let them wonder whether they are being written by another Andy and Terry. But you've just given me a fabulous idea. So thank you very much, Beth. You may find that they become aware of, of another Andy and Terry and then keep going on that. Uh, that Andy and Terry might be aware that they're being written by another Andy and Terry and then we're into philosophical wonderland. So, um, good question. What's your favourite Treehouse book? Here I have all my books. There's all the Treehouse books. I have a few of the Just series. And then these ones. You know, I love the Treehouse series, but the, the book I love the best is one you're holding called The Bad Book, because that was the first book where Terry and I would meet every week and we wrote it together. And it was the first time where we tried to get our pictures, ter Terry's pictures and my words to meet up. And The Bad Book is completely out of control and as you know, should not be read by anybody. Hi, Clary. I love those masks. They are amazing. Um, particularly poor old Captain Woodenhead in the middle there. The kind of green, um, scary, toothy face. Um, and Mr. Mr. Big Nose is looking kind of meaner than usual too. They're fantastic. Do you really have marshmallow making machines? Thanks, Saskia. And I do love your cat ears. Um, I'm sure you've got wings behind your, your back there as well. Um, do we really have a marshmallow machine? Well, look, I'll, I'll be truthful, no. But sometimes, if I'm lucky, Terry will throw marshmallows at me and I have to catch them in my mouth. I want to be an author when I grow up and I'm just wondering what age you were when you started writing books. Thanks. Hi Ella. Um, the great thing about being an author is that you can be an author at any age and you can be an author right now. I started probably when I was your age. As, in fact, as soon as I could pick up a pen, I was drawing silly pictures and writing things that made my family laugh and eventually the, the, my school friends at school. I started collecting some of my pieces and making a little classroom magazine. And if you combine that with reading lots and lots of books, you'll fill your head with lots and lots of ideas. Keep practicing your writing, keep reading lots of books. Hi, Daniel. Uh, will the treehouse be closed for safety reasons because of the coronavirus? Um, 
No, because, you know, in the treehouse, we have a policy of not doing anything that's sensible or, uh, or safe. So uh, I wouldn't expect uh, Terry or Jill or, or me to be instituting those type of restrictions. What we do have, and I'm very happy to tell you, is that in the forthcoming book, the 130-storey treehouse, we have a toilet paper factory which can produce m millions of rolls of toilet paper as fast as, as we can use them. Hi Andy, I love your books. And why are you so disgusting? Uh, who said I'm disgusting, Laurie? <laughs> uh, I mean, if you read the Treehouse books, you'll see that it's Terry Denton who is the disgusting one. Do you remember when we were trapped? Uh, we went up the never-ending staircase and we jumped across to the top of Mount Everest and we got stuck in a nest with the, uh, the razor-toothed birds and the razor-toothed bird dropped worms into the nest me and Jill only pretended to eat the worms, but it was Terry who was actually eating them and enjoying them. Hi, Harris. Hi, Henry. Um, love that picture. Um, can I offer tours of the treehouse? Yes, well, in the 117-storey treehouse, we, we got the tour bus and the visitor centre and um, have conducted many successful tours of the treehouse. All you have to do if you want to sign up for one is uh, pick up the book, 117, and on the, uh, the tour bus picture, just dive right into the, into the book and we'll meet you there, um, set you up with a ticket, and we'll have a lot of fun. Where do you get all these ideas from? <laughs> well, I get them um, from a, a whole variety of places. They come from everywhere all the time. You can get an idea just sitting, you know, in your house and maybe a fly is buzzing around and you're trying to swat the fly. Um, at the same time, I'm thinking, gee, this would be a great problem for Andy and Terry in the treehouse. You know, they could have a fly that's annoying them uh, and they can't kill it. So they have to become, you get, you know, have to get a fly blasting and start firing bowling balls at it. Hi, Zane. Uh, great to hear that you've enjoyed the Just Books. Uh, I, I think we wrote eight of them originally, and they were they were the books that we Terry and I really met each other on. It, you'll notice Terry was always in the margins of those books, but as each book went on, you get to just doomed and just shocking, and just Macbeth. Uh, he broke out of the confines of the margins and became very much a part of the stories. And the Treehouse books have really carried that on. I'm not sure if uh, there'll be another Just book. Did you, when did you come up with the idea of the Treehouse books? Terry and I had started a book called The Bad Book. And this was a collection of lots of short little pieces of bad children, bad parents, bad animals. Everything was bad. Why don't we write a bad book about not being able to write the book? and we'll live in somewhere cool, like maybe a treehouse. After a while, we realised we loved the treehouse and there was less badness and more just having fun and exploring the treehouse. Hi, Lila. Uh, is there anything I regret writing in the treehouse books? Hmm, let me see. I actually regret including Terry Denton as one of the characters. Hello. I think the book would be so much better without Terry. Uh, I think it should be just Andy from start to finish. <coughs> Unfortunately, I can't draw. And um, Terry, um, Terry is a very good illustrator. So I'm stuck with him. As for regretting anything else, not a thing. Hi Elliot, if I could have any band in the world play in the treehouse, who would it be? Good question. Uh, you'd choose Red Hot Chili Peppers. Good choice. Um, I think, uh, who's my favourite band? Oh look, there's a band called Devo. They're a nutbaggery band from the, uh, the 70s and 80s. Um, who did some great songs and when I was uh, growing up I loved this band. They were very funny, very different, very odd. Did 
Terry actually turned Jill's cat into a cat, Mary. Hi, Saskia. I'm afraid Terry did. I came down, there he was, painting the cat yellow, and I said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm just... Uh, I'm just trying to turn it into a canary. And I said, well, that's impossible. Uh, and he said, no, it's not. And then he threw the cat out the window. And to my amazement, it grew wings and, and flew away. Hi, Lila. Um, in Andyland, does all the money have a picture of Andy? Of course. Everything is, is Andy there. We all look like Andy because we are Andy's. Um, the money is Andy's. Uh, what else has that? Oh, there's dogs and cats, and they all have the face of Andy. Um, and, you know, I, I would hang out there more often, but they did let me down, those guys, when they all decided that they, they told me that they liked Terry better. Oh, you know how you put cows on every page? Are they real? That are spy cows? Are they really spy cows, or are they spies? In disguise as cows. Please answer this question. I've been wondering it for two years. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm going to be wondering about this question for the next couple of years too. Are spy cows really spy cows or are they just spies? I, I think the answer must be both. I mean, they are spies, but they are also cows. So I don't see what else you could call them but spy cows. <laughs> Terry's room's a mess. Hi Lenny, um, I love your room there. It looks like it's full of books. Um, Terry's room, of course, is a disaster area that nobody should ever go near because um, I don't think he's ever made his bed. In fact, I don't even know if he sleeps in a bed. He just sleeps in a, a great crazy pile of Terry Denton paper and pens and... Um, and nonsense of all types. Hi Felix and hi Ravi. Um, Mr Big Nose uh, in the books is like the big bad wolf in The Three Little Pigs. Now in real life uh, Mr Big Nose does not have a big nose. Just in case my publisher's watching. Um, uh, you do not have a big nose and you do not have a bad temper and in fact you're not even a man your uh, your name is claire you are a really lovely person and um, you never yell at us my question is when is the next story treehouse book coming hi finn um, very happy to tell you the next treehouse book is going to be published in australia on october the 20th this year hi jasper hi max um the the new book is um is uh, it's obviously top secret uh, but in these questions i have given you a clue uh, there is a soap bubble um, making uh, machine in one of the levels uh, we have a toilet paper factory as you already know uh, we also have one of my, uh, my favorite levels a time wasting level where you can just go in and waste time in all sorts of new and unusual time wastery ways. Um, the the basic book is um, is about a rather unfortunate experience where we are kidnapped by giant flying eyeballs from outer space, and they take us and our tree into space for an intergalactic adventure um, which is not always very pleasant but uh, very exciting. How did you and Terry really meet? Hi Sol, uh, I can tell by the way you've asked the question that you don't believe that we, we met when Terry's inflatable underpants led him to be floating around in the ocean and I came and rescued him in a pedal boat. Um, uh, unfortunately, that's the, the far more entertaining version of how we met. In real life, uh, about 25 years ago, I had my first book, which wasn't a treehouse book, but I went, I was, I took it to, well, a publisher said I would like to publish it. And they said, we will get this very funny illustrator called Terry Denton to illustrate your book. We think he'd be a good match for you. How did you meet Terry and Jill? Hi, Ria. Um, well, as I've already explained, a publisher put me and Terry together 
And then, even more magical, the publisher had an editor called Jill. And so Jill was assigned to the book to help us clean it up and make it comprehensible to uh, human beings. And um, the, the longer I worked with Jill, the more I realised I had in common with her. Yeah, we eventually uh, crossed the line from editor and we became um, boyfriend and girlfriend. Now we're, we're married and we have uh, one daughter. Where does Terry get his inflating underwear? Terry gets his inflatable underwear at the Inflatable Underwear Emporium, which is a, uh, a shop dedicated to inflatable underwear and inflatable clothes of all types. Hi Noah, Lulu and Harvey. Um, you've got some great ideas too. A tiny dog level. That would match the tiny horse level that we had in the, the previous book. Um, anything tiny is fun and of course anything super large is fun as well. Uh, a unicorn level. There, that's been a big request and you'll notice, I think it's the beginning of the 104, and he has a unicorn on his head. In one of my future books, can I add a big snail just anywhere? <laughs> That's a nice idea. I'd like to see a giant snail come in and maybe squash the tree house and just crush it underneath a, uh, a river of slime. I love your book so much. I even colour it in all the pictures. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I love what you've done to your book. I love that you're using your book as a, as a, as a colouring book, a toy, something to play with. And if you want to um, colour them in, great. If you want to put arrows through Terry's head, um, I recommend that. Don't do it to Andy, though. I mean, and Andy's got no sense of humour whatsoever. Hi, Lucas. Uh, if I wrote adult books, what would I write about? I have no idea. Um, because when I write, this is what comes out, just kind of mad nonsense. Hi Max, uh, glad you enjoyed the day my bum went psycho. Uh, has my bum ever come off? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I've got it right here. It just it fell off this morning and, um, and it tried to run away, but luckily I was able to shut the bedroom door before it could get out and cause trouble in the neighbourhood. Because, you know, there's enough going on with, with the virus, let alone runaway bums terrorising everyone. Thanks, Andy. Bye! <laughs>